phone or an item of jewelry, your glasses, necklace, um, wallet, watch, something that's important to you in your bag or on your person. Has everyone got something? Yeah? Well, let's, let's get it ready. Let me look what I've got. Okay, so get your object ready. Lily, what we're doing, I'm not sure if you heard, for those people who just came in, everyone has something that is important. Something that is important. Car key, perfect. House keys, car keys, mobile phone, spectacles, watch things, um, wallet, water bottle, Something that is important. You too, Venerable. Do you have something important? Something valuable? Something special in your room? Oh, remote control is special. Is it a bit cold? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, there you go, yeah. But, Venerable, we, we're finding something important, something special, something, something um, personal, like Glasses, wallet, phone, credit card. Is it platinum? Oh, identity card. Okay, yeah. Well, not as good as a platinum Amex, but. <laughs> okay, does everyone have something? Okay, let's go over to our, our spot. Over to our objects. So feel free to bring a chair nearby and come we'll sit on the ground again. So you've got your objects, right? So you're going to put your object down here on the right-hand side near your right knee. And you've got five seconds only to choose an object from the pile. Don't think too hard about it, okay? Ready? Five, four, you're running out of time. Three, two, one and a half, one and a little bit. And uh, for the live, do you have something important on your person? Like your wallet or your phone? Yeah? Great, you can get it out and put it here, like this, on your right. And this one goes on our left. So the object we just took goes on your left, and your precious object goes on your right. Wait, wait, you've got two of your... No, 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 you need one of your own. Do you have something like your phone, your glasses, anything that's precious and important to you? Does everyone have something? Okay, so we're going to take the object on our left and we're going to give it to the person next to us. Left. It's very good. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So I get a box of tissues. What did you get, Bante? Some coffee. So this is like <laughs> complicated, isn't it? We do this with kids. So everyone's got something, yeah? Not only did everyone get something, everyone practiced generosity. Giving. So this 
theoretically, this could belong to you forever now, whatever it is you ended up with. You've got some honey, that's great. Some people got some soap, nice, just like Christmas. So this is easy, right? Giving is easy. And it feels good to give. Remember downstairs before when we were getting ready for, for lunch? And I said, how do you feel when you're giving? And one of the women, she said, happy. Right? And everyone was like, yeah, we love giving. Giving makes you so happy. Some of you can see where this is going. So, you've got your precious thing. <laughs> Who's ready to practice giving? <laughs> What's changed? What's changed? Yeah, it's harder, yeah. Attachment, yes. Attachment to what? Yeah. My stuff. It's easy to practice generosity with stuff that doesn't belong to you, right? It's easy to practice generosity with stuff you don't want as well, right? It's really difficult to practice generosity um, with something that is important to you. And just just to be really clear, um, I'm not going to ask you to give away your stuff. Although it would be a real test, right? Yeah? Depending on how much is in that wallet. <laughs> Easy to give away, not much. But you see, that's, that's the thing. It's actually quite hard when you don't have much to practice generosity. It's easy when, you, when you're wealthy to practice generosity, right? And when we, when, we, when we think about the thing that's stopping us from, from giving stuff away, it's, when it comes down to it, in the Buddha's terms, it's greed. Wanting this. It's hard to give, right? We become a little bit selfish. Mine. I'm not sharing this with you. This is mine. I'm not going to give stuff away that I want. This is mine. This belongs to me. And so we see that it's not just it's not just our craving, our our desire for things, it's our attachment to ourself as well that prevents us from giving. We separate ourselves from others, right? When we share, we're including them. Us. Ours. There's no division between me and you. And this is something that's very beautiful about generosity. It breaks down that division between me, myself, I, myself, and others. You want them to have this thing. You want them to be happy. You want them to experience kindness and love. And the thing that stops us doing that to everyone is craving, attachment, greed, mindfulness, and the self. Again, just to be really clear, the Buddha didn't say you had to give everything away. You weren't allowed to have possession. So it's like no one's going to stand behind you and say, you're a bad Buddhist. 
you were hesitating there. There's a story, I think it's, I think it's maybe in the linear, about um, a nun who, I, I think someone, a, a, a bad motivated person, kept on demanding things from her. And so she, you know, she gave things. And then he's like, give me your robe. And she was like, no, if I give you my robe, I'll be, I'll be naked. Like, I need this. Right? And so, you know, for monks and nuns, we're allowed to have possessions, hopefully not too many, and we're allowed to keep them. And no one can tell us we should just keep everything that we own away. But you do notice with, with some monks how, how little they have and how generous they can be, even with things that they value. And for lay people, of course, you have you have more, and you can you can keep what you have. No one is going to to stand behind you and you know, whisper in your ear a bad name. But the practice of generosity is a spiritual opportunity, and it allows for joy to arise. So why wouldn't you practice generosity? Before we move downstairs, is everyone comfortable? Can I give a, a, a little talk before we, or should we go back to our seats? Yeah? So, um, before we, when we were downstairs, um, there was a person called Vasaka. Do you know Vasaka? So, I don't know her either. I just know this name. Because again, this name comes from um, the time of the Buddha. And Visaka, Visaka was a laywoman. And she was foremost in generosity. So the Buddha, he kind of, he gave out titles once in a while to his bhikkhus, bhikkhunis, lay women and lay men. And he said, oh, this this." This bhikkhuni, she is foremost in vinya knowledge. This bhikkhuni, she's, she's the best at being a teacher. This bhikkhu, he has the most faith. This layman, he's the best at this. This laywoman, she's the best at that. Start giving out merit awards, right? Or employee of the month awards. And Visaka, she was foremost in generosity. So she was really good at practicing generosity. And many of the people we know from the suttas, we know about them because they were generous, like Ananda Pitaka, who gave a monastery, or Amba Pali, who gave a monastery. These were like really generous people. And Visaka, she once, in this story from the Vinaya, she approached the Buddha and asked him for permission to give eight different things. These were requisites for the monks and nuns, such as robes, medicines, and food, and things like that. So she asked permission from the Buddha, like, can I give you and Sangha this kind of stuff? Isn't that nice? What a nice gesture. This is like an invitation. She's requesting, you know, can I, can I give this stuff to the Sangha? And the Buddha was like, yes. He would never want to squish someone's generosity, right? So he says, yes. So then he says, why do you want to give this stuff to the Sangha? She's like, well, you know, we're Clothes and clothes, if I give them medicine, they make them better. And it's like, yes, fine, that's good. But what's in it for you? Right? What's in it for you? This is a pretty tough question. When, when you give, when you're generous, what's in it for you? What are you getting out of it? 
Are you calculating the amount of merit? Are you thinking, oh, if I do this, I'll get something back? Are you thinking, oh, if I do this, I'll get to heaven? Why, why are you being generous? Don't tell me. I don't want to know. But Vasaka, she was an intelligent woman and a skillful practitioner. And she said, this is her answer, she said, when I give, I reflect upon my generosity. And when I reflect upon my generosity, joy is in my mind. Moja, joy, gladness. That's pretty good, isn't it? To go from the state of having no joy to having joy. Like, that's pretty good. That's okay, right? It's better than nothing, <laughs> isn't it? So you have joy. People don't look very excited. Already, you're moving from whatever level you're currently on to a mind with joy in it. Sadhu, that's amazing. Suddenly, you have a mind that's been fused with gladness. It's pretty special. So, she said, when I practice generosity, I reflect upon it, and joy is in my mind. And that's just the beginning of this sequence. Many of you will have heard this sequence, of course, as we've begun Sutta studies with Ajahn Brahmari. And this sequence goes like this. Do a good action. That's nice. Reflect upon it. Joy. Next, this joy deepens and becomes piti. Rapture. Thrill. Enthusiasm, ecstasy. And then that rapture, pity, deepens and becomes kaya pasadi. Kaya pasadi. This means bodily tranquility. This means the body becomes more calm and more peaceful, and the sense doors are starting to close down a little bit. They're not so important all of a sudden. We've moved already from a sensory experience of the world where we contact the world using our senses and where our enjoyment comes from using the senses. And we're starting to move internally. Away from the senses. Internally. So our sense faculties are becoming tranquilized. That helps us to develop a more internalized form of happiness, which we call bliss, sukha. That sukha feels good, right? That's why it's called bliss. This is why people practice meditation, because they experience a good time. And that, that good time of bliss keeps you there, meditating. And the mind, because it's experiencing so much pleasure, starts to deepen and deepen and deepen. And that bliss is what draws the mind deeper and deeper into stillness, samadhi. So let's go through that little journey Vasaka um, was on. She hasn't finished yet. Starts with giving, reflecting upon her generosity. Next comes joy. Close. Joy. Joy becomes pity or rapture. That rapture becomes bodily tranquility. That tranquility becomes 
bliss. And that bliss draws the mind into samadhi, stillness. And from there, wisdom can arise. So she, she says that after I develop samadhi, I can develop the five spiritual faculties and the five spiritual powers. Just very quickly, this is sadha, faith, uh, virya, energy, sati, uh, mindfulness, uh, samadhi, uh, stillness, and panya, wisdom. So these are the the five spiritual faculties, the five uh, spiritual powers that she said she can develop. And so she's leading up, leading up through successively more complicated and more beautiful states of mind. And she's developing these minds of wisdom, which lead to vimuti, lead to freedom, nibbana. And this movement of the mind, so we're here, and she's suddenly gone all the way up here, right? This is the power of generosity. And so she said this to the Buddha, and he said, of course, this is sadhu, 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 very good, Vasaka, very good, like getting praised by the Buddha. It's pretty cool, right? So he said, very good. This is the potential that she saw in her generosity. And so no wonder she was foremost in giving. She was having a great time. She was so joyful in her giving because she saw the benefit. That's why she gave. She could see the benefit for herself as well as, of course, that it benefited others. And so this is how we can also train. In our own life, we have so many opportunities to practice generosity, perhaps more opportunities than we allow ourselves to practice meditation, if the truth be told, right? If we're practicing 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes a week or month, then our potential inside our meditation is limited. If we're practicing generosity, we've got so many opportunities all day long. Yeah? You're making food for the, for the kids, um, helping someone across the road, listening to a friend, giving them some time, uh, giving someone a birthday present, making some food for the Sangha. All day long, you can practice generosity. And then the thing that's really going to transform your practice is understanding how to skillfully reflect upon that generosity, how to make the most out of it, because that's how we move from the doing to the joy. Sure, we might get joyful in the moment, but this. Later on, when we reflect upon it, we get to amplify that, that joy. It comes back to us. It's like karma. You give, you get something back. You, get, you give, you get a good feeling, right? And so this, this practice of recollecting generosity is what the Buddha taught. Do you know what it's called? Chaga Nusati. So this Practice chaganusati is what we're going to do now. And in this practice, I'll tell you the, the I'll tell you the phrasing of the, the chaganusati as we find it in the suttas, such as in the Mahanama Sutta. And it says, How fortunate, how wonderful it is that I am a generous person living in a world full of selfishness, miserliness, that I am a person who has practiced generosity. How wonderful. And I am free from the taint of 
selfishness and miserliness. I delight in giving, delight in being generous. It's just a paraphrase. And so this, this is a beautiful recollection, and it helps us to, on the one hand, develop that muscle of giving, and on the other hand, helps us come out of our aversion, sorry, our aversion to giving, that is our greed, our selfishness, and our miserliness. So you see how it works? We abandon the things that are unwholesome and we cultivate the wholesome. This is our right effort. So this is what we're going to do for the next 30 minutes or so. Does anyone have any questions before we, before we start? Does anyone want to give away? Not yet. Okay. We'll see. 